Reading's informational forum on the upcoming override ballot. I'm Marcy Bailey and I'll be your moderator for the session today. We're fortunate enough to have with us a knowledgeable panel composed of our state and local officials. First, I'd like to take a moment to in introduce those folks with us tonight. First, we have Mike Mastascusa from the Finance Committee, Greg Baluconis, who is our town administrator, Robert Masseri, better known as Bob, who is our chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Carl Nelson, the North Reading Public Schools business manager, Jerry Venezia, who is a school committee member, and lastly, Brad Jones, Jr., who is our state representative. Thank you all for being here. Tonight we're going to have a format of a question and answer panel and we'll get a chance to speak with each of the officials with us tonight. We'll cover North Reading's current fiscal position and why North Reading leaders have proposed two overrides for us on our ballot on June 5th, a one-year override and a three-year override. These overrides are aimed at managing education and town services and maintaining those for one year and three years respectively. If you're unable to take the time to watch our forum now as you flip through the channels, please be aware that it will be rerun from now and through Monday, June 4th at 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. each evening on Channel 22. Now, without further ado, I'd like to turn to our experts and begin our Q&A. Tonight, first, we're going to start, start with Brad Jones, Jr., our state representative. Brad, I'd like to start by getting your perspective on the state level and ask how does North Reading's fiscal situation compare with that of other communities in Massachusetts? Well, I think uh, all communities are facing a variety of hurdles. It all depends sort of where they fall. Um, I think specifically North Reading uh, in facing the question of an override uh, is sort of at the beginning of a cycle again. Uh, I also represent the town of Reading. They're sort of finishing their fifth year of an override uh, that they had done uh, in feeling very much that next year they may have to come back. Uh, the town of Linfield, which saw a fairly dramatic increase in their Chapter 70 level this year, uh, similar to what uh, North Reading uh, received last year as a dramatic increase, uh, they have found themselves the beneficiary of a development proposal uh, for the Sheraton Colonial uh, property that was actually put them in a pretty good situation, coupled with their um, uh, increase in local aid. Uh, and Middleton finds himself, uh, again, always facing the challenges, but again, being able to go forward this year without an override. Uh, so it varies from community to community. Uh, this is a cycle, I think, obviously, where North Reading this year finds itself facing override. I think Reading will probably find itself looking at an override next year. Uh, Linfield uh, had an override a couple years ago. Uh, and I think every town certainly doesn't like to get in the situation where they're potentially coming back every year um, and trying to... Uh, if they seek an override, be able to justify it and make sure that for whatever time frame it's meant to uh, provide funds for, uh, live up to that commitment uh, as strongly as possible. And I think that's obviously where North Reading finds itself this year. Great, thanks. Yeah, unfortunately, we certainly do find mm -hmm. ourselves there. You alluded to our big bump in Chapter 70 last year when we got some more aid, actually a substantial amount of aid in the summer. And one question I've heard from many residents that I was hoping you could address today was, can we expect a similar Chapter 70 bump this summer? I think a lot of people are hoping for that. Is that like? Well, when we were going from FY05 into, or excuse me, FY06 into FY07, we got about a $1.1 $1 .1 million increase. Uh, and obviously, if we did receive the same type of dramatic increase from FY07 going to FY08, um, obviously, it would have been welcome news. But the news this year was only a $400,000 increase. Uh, that is not likely to change going forward because we did a local aid resolution, um, which has been incorporated into the House budget. The Senate completed their budget last week. And we expect the end of this week um, that a conference committee would be appointed to work out differences between the two budgets. Uh, but the local aid number uh, is essentially agreed to, and it's about a $400,000 increase uh, in Chapter 70 over last year. Uh, last year, we also saw a dramatic increase in lottery distribution because uh, essentially we uncapped it, which meant that all proceeds after prizes and administrative costs from the lottery were given back to cities and towns. So that's going to continue this year, but that doesn't allow for a dramatic increase unless people uh, play a lot more. Uh, and additional assistance has stayed the same. And those are the three primary local aid accounts uh, mm -hmm. that North Reading derives benefit from. Um, so in going forward, uh, next year would be the third year of sort of a five-year phase in of changes that were incorporated in the FY07 budget. Um, you know, and it's sort of an open question as to what, what kind of an additional increase uh, North Reading would see. Uh, I, I would certainly think it might be on par with the increase it got this year, but probably not as substantial an increase as it got last year. 
uh, but that's all dictated uh, as to the revenue picture for the state uh, going into FY09, which we won't really even have a guesstimate to until uh, sometime next January. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I guess I'd like to follow up um, the the $400,000 in additional Chapter 70 mm -hmm. aid we received for this coming fiscal year. I'd like to follow that up with a question to our town administrator. Mm -hmm. um, Greg, has that additional $400,000 in aid and any other state aid we're expecting, has that already been factored into the budget when the override was planned for? Yeah, it has. Um, uh, North Reading, like many other communities, is facing a situation where its fixed costs are rising in excess of what the law Proposition two and a half can provide for funding and also state aid. So we did uh, include that amount in our budget and we still have a shortfall as, as a result. Okay. So unfortunately, it doesn't sound like there's going to be any windfall um, this summer like there was last summer. Uh, of course, another concern with the override is um, especially for senior citizens who, and others who are either fixed income or low income, and they might be struggling a bit with their property tax bills. Brad, can you tell us at the state level, there is, I believe, some assistance available. Well, can you talk I, about that? There are obviously a number of exemptions and abatements, but I think in the aggregate, they probably uh, amount to a fairly minimal amount of support, and uh, Greg can probably speak to the ones that are sort of locally adopted, uh, locally accepted. Probably the biggest one that exists right now is the Senior Circuit Breaker, uh, which essentially says uh, that if you meet certain income guidelines and your house is valued uh, below a certain level, and that level was actually dramatically increased uh, two years ago, uh, actually legislation signed in the town of North Reading. Um, that if, if your property tax bill exceeds 10% uh, of your income, uh, your property tax bill and half your water bill exceed 10% of your income, you're entitled to a refundable credit uh, of this year of up to $870. Uh, and one of the things we found is that a number of seniors uh, are not aware of it, uh, in that, and since they may not have a tax obligation with the state, but since it's refundable, the state will send you a check. So it isn't, while well, I can apply it towards some tax liability that I have, you may not have a tax liability, you may not even file a state tax return because you don't feel you're obligated to, you should still go ahead and file. And we've had people in all of my towns uh, come in, find out about it, and file returns going back three years and potentially get $1,500 or $2,000 back from the state um, that obviously they can apply either, you know, for whatever their particular costs of, of living are. Uh, that's probably the biggest uh, thing that we currently have on, on the books right now um, that I would urge people either through contacting, uh, you know, Mary Prenny and, and the Council on Aging uh, at the Senior Center or uh, contacting my office to find out about if you qualify, if you meet the age requirements, uh, which is essentially 65 or older, the income guidelines, which are a little different if you're married versus single, uh, and your house is valued below a certain threshold, um, you may very well qualify and you should take advantage of it because it really is a great program. So folks who think they may qualify can contact Give us your a call office if there's a question, absolutely. Or, or the North Reading Department of Elder Affairs. Yes. Mary Prenning's the director there. That's great. Um, okay. I, I'd like to turn now to Bob Masseri, the chairman of a board of selectmen. I guess I'd like to start at the most basic level, Bob, and if you could tell um, viewers this evening, why has the board of selectmen proposed two overrides on the ballot? I think that can be a little confusing to folks who haven't seen that before. The... Uh, <coughs> The reason for uh, proposing uh, two override amounts is that uh, working with the school department, the uh, finance committee, and the uh, board of selectmen, we have put together a three-year budget plan. And the three-year plan uh, requires additional revenue in each of the uh, three years. So the idea behind a uh, three-year override was to uh, provide uh, uh, the amount of revenue, tax revenue needed to cover each of the three years. Uh, the plus side of this is that we are now operate, we would be operating to a fixed budget plan for three years, that uh, uh, we would be uh, basically uh, uh, presenting to the public a plan that they could look at and say, this is what we're doing for the next three years. And uh, the uh, three-year override is aimed at covering it. Now, in terms of what's needed in each of the three years, in year one, we would only raise, even though we have created a, a uh, uh, an override amount, we would actually tax under that amount only to what is needed to uh, fund the budget for the first year. And then subsequently in the second year, we would do the same thing. 
and in the third year we would do the uh, third thing, uh, the third, uh, uh, we would raise the uh, taxes to cover the third year, and that would bring us to a point where, uh, based on our, our, our estimates, uh, uh, that we would have enough money under the three-year plan to cover each of the three years. But there's also a one-year override on the, the ballot. Can you address why the selectmen have chosen to put that on as well? We've, so, uh, we put that on the ballot because uh, there have been, uh, uh, there has not been 100% consensus on um, both the uh, school board or the uh, board of selectmen associated with uh, the ability to estimate the total revenue uh, uh, forecast for years two and three, one. And two, that uh, some people felt uh, that uh, the public uh, would only uh, vote for a one-year override. So as a result, uh, the board felt it was important that uh, the community have the opportunity to choose. And therefore, we put the two questions on the ballot. But as a follow-up, if more revenues than budgeted become available either through local receipts or state aid or other means, do they all, does all of the override need to be spent or are there, there's a way to manage that? No, in fact, if we uh, received in excess of our estimates, which would be a great thing, we, because we have put together a three-year budget plan, we would only be spending or need to raise the amount of money to fund those plans. And as a result, if we had additional state aid or we came across some additional uh, uh, revenue and receipts uh, from uh, uh, excise tax or a anything that uh, the town is, uh, uh, that the town uh, is able to receive, then in fact, uh, we would not have to raise the tax to that level. An example of this would be uh, let's say we received an additional $100,000 in uh, uh, state aid. Then we would not need to raise $100,000 in taxation. And that obviously would spread, be spread across by a reduction in the tax rate for that particular year. We could actually, if our revenues receipts exceeded our projections in year two and three, or even in one, two, and three, right? Uh, the three-year override could actually cover us for maybe year four or even five, depending on, one, our ability to, uh, uh, our ability to uh, reduce uh, some of our costs, our fixed costs, for example, uh, as we look to uh, uh, make some savings in uh, employee benefits. and. And then, of course, any additional revenue that would come in would, you know, offset the uh, the overall uh, cost of uh, the override, mm -hmm. or the overall tax rate would be reduced by uh, the, the appropriate amounts of receipts. Okay. I, I think um, Brad the, wanted to weigh in on this issue as well. The only sort of additional piece that I would add to what Bob said was. <clears throat> I think the town would have to look very carefully as to whether it was a recurring receipt uh, as opposed to a one-time distribution uh, in terms of how it factored in that expenditure towards an operating budget. Um, so that if obviously it was a Chapter 70 increase that was unanticipated, that was going to be programmatic and you could continue years forward, that might lead you to, um, I think, to the course of action that Bob just outlined. Whereas if it was some other uh, type of receipt um, uh, let's say there was uh, a settlement of a lawsuit um, or something that the town was a recipient of. That